In this video, I introduce how to model a consumer who starts off with an endowment, a, a consumer that doesn't just start with prices and income, but starts with a bundle of X and Y. For example, this bundle here, let's label it A. Things aren't too much different than where we were before, so let's do a little review of what a budget constraint looks like when we have prices and income. Now, as we discussed in Lecture 7, the budget constraint is where the expenditures, expenditures on X plus the expenditures on Y equal the income of the consumer. We get two points, points on the axes, and then we connect those two dots and that's going to be our budget constraint. So that was a pretty straightforward way of understanding where the budget constraint is. Now, with an endowment economy, a consumer doesn't just get income dropped out of the sky. The consumer gets income from selling the endowment. Here we're denoting the initial bundle that the consumer is endowed with as omega x and omega y. That would just be how much money the consumer could get from selling all of the x plus how much money the consumer could get from selling all of the y. If we connect this string of equalities, that's going to be our endowment economy budget constraint. Now, as you can see, the budget constraint has the same form as before. It's just that now we have to figure out what income is for a given set of prices. And so we could ask those same two questions that we asked before. How much of X could this person consume? They spend all of their resources on X. And we could ask the same question with Y. And then all we'd have to do is just first, in a first stage, compute their effective nominal income. And that will give us... Uh, that will give us a measure of income, and then it just be this nominal income divided by the price. So that would be a way to figure out the intercepts, and we could get our endowment economy budget constraint from that. But notice one additional thing here, is that we can actually, we actually know a point on the endowment economy budget constraint. It's the endowment point. No matter what the prices are, this consumer is going to be able to afford the endowment point. And so no matter what the prices are, the budget constraint has to go through the original endowment point. So really, we only need to ask one of these questions, and then we'll have two points that are on our endowment economy budget constraint. So let's say we ask how much, uh, how much X could this consumer afford, and we come up with this much here. Then we have two points on the line, and we can connect the dots. And this point here, when we connect the dots and do that straight line through the original endowment point, this point here would be how much Y the consumer would be able to afford. And in addition to this, uh, this graph, another thing that we know, as, uh, as we knew from before in our, our description of the original budget constraint, the slope of this budget constraint, if you solve for Y and in terms of X, that is the slope of this budget constraint, just like it was before, is negative PX over PY. Okay, so now let's consider what happens to the endowment budget constraint when we see price changes. For example, let's suppose the price of X increases. Now, if the price of X increases, the magnitude of the slope that we just, uh, that we just described here, this budget constraint, the magnitude of the slope gets bigger. That means that the budget constraint gets steeper. Note also that this steeper budget constraint has to go through the original endowment point. Because as we described before, the endowment point is on every endowment budget constraint. And so what we see is that an increase in the price pivots the budget line through the, uh, the endowment point. Now we could also ask the question, what happens as the price of Y decreases? Now if the price of Y decreases, we also get this steeper budget constraint. If it decreases to the same uh, price of X over price of Y ratio, we would get the exact same shift in the budget line, and it's going to be a pivot through the original endowment point. This is, uh, this is sort of a more general way of thinking about budget constraints in, um, in an endowment economy. It turns out that when we want to describe general equilibrium, we'll need to have these tools in our back pocket. We didn't say that income was determined outside of our model. Um, and we're allowing the prices to it themselves determine income. And this is going to allow us to have a much, a much richer description of consumer behavior. Um, in particular, 
Uh, we like the fact that with these endowment uh, budget constraints, that consumers can actually pick their level of income by exerting effort in one direction or another. And so this is actually a richer depiction of the world than just taking in income as given. And it turns out that the implications of this are a whole field of, of economic analysis that will deepen our understanding of human behavior.